All right, the flow for today is going to take us toward Peacock. So it's going to be an arm balance. We'll get to that pose at the very end, but it's going to be a lot of work through the upper body, uh, working with your bent arm strength, the upper back, the shoulders, a lot of the co extra core engagement that goes into the pose as well. So just keep that in mind. Before we get started, I only have one demonstration before we start. Within the flow itself, we are going to take this flattened version of Crow, and I want you to work this toward a sort of crow push-up, which is pretty difficult to do. It's kind of a big ask. You don't have to do a whole lot, though, keep in mind. You're going to have to work your balance and try to move with your feet still up off the floor. Now, there's levels to this, all right? Just a little bit of movement could be good enough if you're having trouble just staying stable. And if you're able to take this further, there's quite, you can take this pretty far, but just be sure not to put your face down on the floor. So what's going to happen at the end of each sequence, you're going to come out of side plank, actually, and then come into a full plank. So you're going to have both hands down on the floor. Your feet are going to be back, and then you're going to walk this fold into a forward fold. And this is where you're going to take it to crow. So dig your fingertips down, bring the heels up, bring the knees out wide outside your arms. So you're going to squeeze the legs in, and this is going to help you feel out your position. So it's the action of the inner thighs that's going to help keep you stable. Keep in mind, be sure you're turning that on. Grip with your fingers. Look forward, start to lean, and just go slow. When the feet lift, bring them up together toes to touch, and keep your legs squeezing in. Now, what I want you to do from here is a little bit of this push-up motion. Now, this can be minor. Just keep the legs squeezing in, pull the elbows back, let your shoulders dip a little bit, and then lift back up. Even going back and forth an inch, and forth an inch can be a lot. If you're able to take it further, pull the elbows back, maybe dip this down really low. You can even take this to the point of touching your nose to the floor. Just be sure that you can squeeze the legs in and lift back up. We're going to go back and forth like that three times. Now, Try not to bite off too much more than you can chew. We're going to do this four times, keep in mind, so feel it out, see how far you want to go. Just a little bit of movement for, forward and back is plenty. And just keeping your legs active like this is going to be a lot if you're not used to this kind of thing. So just keep your hands gripping the floor, keep your legs squeezing in, and do what you can to control your position in space as you're moving back and forth and be as deliberate as you can. Once you've done three of those, just go ahead and take a vinyasa, and then we'll move to the next part of the sequence from there. So just keep that in mind. So to get this started, go ahead and bring yourself to standing and come to the front of the mat. And then go ahead and look down. See if the feet are about hips width distance apart. We'll take a little bit of internal rotation here to begin. So angle your big toes towards center, heels out a little bit. So make sure the big toes are closer than the heels are to each other. As you look down, lift all 10 toes up off the floor, spread them out nice and wide. And then set them down with the toes still spread wide. Now grip the floor with your toes. Bring your weight forward as much as you can. Pull your weight back toward your heels. Just center yourself here somewhere in between with the toes still active. Now tense up your thighs to draw the kneecaps up a bit. Keep your legs straight. Hold tension in the glutes to ground the spine. And then tense up through the belly, round the low ribs to keep yourself upright. Hold that tall posture. Extend the crown of the head up toward the ceiling. Pull your chin in just a little bit. And let go of any tension around the shoulders. Let your arms just hang at your sides. And then go ahead, close your eyes here. So just take a moment to settle in like this, let your mind quiet down. And with your eyes closed, just take a moment to scan your position from the ground up. So keep the toes pressing down into the floor at least a little bit. Hold that tension through the thighs, through the glutes, and around your midsection to keep yourself up tall. Be sure to let go of tension around the shoulders, let your arms just hang. And then start to deepen your breathing here. So with your inhales, pull in as much as you can. Fill up your lungs. Hold on to all that breath at the top. When you exhale, constrict the back of your throat. Slow your breath down on the way back out. And just work to make your exhales last at least as long as your inhales as you breathe. And just keep breathing like this to start. Now when you're ready, hit take a deep inhale. With the exhale, just open your eyes. Take it slow. With an inhale, reach your arms up high. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Inhale, reach up high. Exhale, hands through center. Inhale, arms up high. Exhale through center again. Inhale, reach up high. 
And then with the exhale, lean to the right. So right arm reaches down toward the floor. Stretch the left arm right. Just hold here. Pull your left shoulder back. Gaze up high. With the next inhale, come back to vertical. Reach up. And with the exhale, lean left. Left arm down. Stretch the right arm left. Gaze up high. Pull the right shoulder back. With your next inhale, bring yourself up tall. Both arms high. With the exhale, this time, elbows out wide. Open up your chest. Let your head fall back. Inhale, reach up, look forward. Exhale, elbows wide, open up again. Inhale, reach up high. Exhale, one more time, elbows out wide. Open up your chest, let your head fall back. Hold here, squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other. Press the hips forward. Now, with your next inhale, bring the hands to your hips. Bring your torso back upright. And then hinge from the hips. Hold the arch in your low back. Bring yourself down toward halfway. And then go ahead and let it go. Bend your knees, bring your fingertips down to the floor, and just pedal out a little bit. Move your hips a little bit side to side. Stay loose. Now from here, while you're folded, we'll take this into a twist. So put the weight to the left foot. Step your right foot back and across. Outside edges of the feet to touch. Now focus on the right leg. Keep it as straight as you can. But then bend into your left knee. Go light on that left foot. Feel this in the outer right hip. Now if you're ready to take it further, slide the left hand as far right as you can go. Keep the right hip high. And then maybe go further. You can reach your right arm up toward the ceiling. Try to stack the shoulders, gaze up high, and just hold here. Take an inhale. Now the exhale. Get both hands down. Undo the cross of your legs. And take it the other way. So step the left foot back and across outside edges of the feet to touch. Focus the weight on the left foot. Keep that leg as straight as you can. But bend the right knee. Stay light on that foot. Now slide the right hand over to the left. Feel this in the outer left hip. Maybe stay right here. If you can go further, reach your left arm high. Work to stack your shoulders. Gaze up high. And again, focus sweat on that left leg. Keep breathing. Take an inhale. Now with the exhale, both hands down. Uncross the legs. And see if the feet about hips with distance apart. Heels in, toes out. Now bring your hands to your hips. Come all the way back upright again. And then from here, we'll take this through the lower body. So we're going to take this to a few Hindu squats. I want you to reach your arms straight forward. Keep your shoulders down. Keep your torso upright as best you can. And try to hold tension in your core. You're trying to stay vertical as we move. Now, as you're looking forward, press into the toes. Lift your heels up off the floor. Heels stay lifted. Now go slow. Bend the knees. Keep the heels high. And try to keep your spine toward vertical here. Come down as low as you can, ideally all the way to the heels. And then bring yourself all the way back up and set the heels down. Now you can keep the arms reaching forward like this. This will be easier. If you can take it further, bring the hands behind your head. Be sure you can keep your shoulders pulled back. Either way, lift your heels up off the floor again, and then make it smooth. Bend the knees. Heels stay high. Work to keep your torso upright. Come down low toward your heels. And then bring it back up all the way. Make the motion smooth. And set the heels back down. Three more. Heels up high. Keep the gaze forward. Bend the knees. Heels stay high. Take it down as low as you can. Come back up all the way. Keep your spine vertical and set your feet flat. Heels up again. Take it slow. Bend the knees. Sink down. Move with control. Keep your core active. And then all the way back up the vertical. Set the heels down. One more time. Heels up high. Look forward. Bend the knees. Sink down. Make it controlled. Make it smooth. And this time, once you're down, go ahead and bring your hands behind you one at a time. And lower yourself down to a seat. Now, once you're seated, you can just go ahead and fold the knees side to side for a moment here. But then bring everything back to center and sit this up tall with your legs forward. Now, keep the feet about hips width distance apart. Pick your hands up off the floor and see that you can actually tilt your pelvis forward and keep an arch in your low back. Now, if your hamstrings are tight, your low back's going to round. In that case, you're going to have to bend the knees and just keep the heels down like this. But engage your core so your, your belly presses forward at least a little bit. Now, you can keep the hands in front of your chest. Or if you want to take it further, bring the hands behind your head. And either way, keep your core engaged, keep your spine up tall. This is going to be a little weird here, but stay with me. So what I want you to do is basically you're just going to walk on your sit bones. So shift your weight to the left, shift the right sit bone forward just a couple inches, and then shift the right. Left sit bone goes forward. So you're just walking on your butt. Shift your weight side to side, keep your spine tall, keep your core engaged. Take this all the way to the front of the mat. And then once you, once you took it to the front, just reverse the direction. So pull your sit bones back one at a time. Keep your spine upright. And basically, we're loosening up around the low back. Now keep everything engaged. Keep your spine vertical as you're moving. Just a few inches at a time. We're taking this all the way to the back of the mat. 
Again, bend the knees if you need to. Resist any rounding in your spine. And once you take it all the way back, reverse dire direction again and walk this forward. Keep your spine upright, keep your core engaged, just let your weight shift side to side as you move one leg and then the other. And then once you make it to the front of the mat, mat again, go ahead back up. And we're just going to recenter ourselves. So come back in and center yourself on your mat more or less to where you started. And then once you're there, go ahead and release this. Bring your hands down to the floor. Now still keep your legs in front of you, feet about hips with distance apart. Hinge from the hips and come forward. Set your hands down outside your thighs about halfway down. Now rotate your fingertips out to the sides at least a little bit, at least 45 degrees with the middle fingers. You can always take it further if you like. Now press into your palms, bend the knees if you need to, bring your belly to touch your thighs, and then push your hands into the floor. Keep this fold, but lift your butt up off the mat and keep it lifted. We're going to go back and forth from here to reverse tabletop. So stay lifted, but shift forward. Set the feet flat. Squeeze your glutes, press your hips up high, and then come back down, pull your hips back between your arms. Again, shift forward, press your hips up, squeeze your glutes, and then sink down and pull your hips back. Shift forward, feet flat, hips up high, and then pull back, sink back down. Bring it forward, squeeze your glutes, press up again, and then pull your hips back behind the arms. Shift forward, lift your hips up high. And then sink back down, pull your hips back. Two more times, shift it forward, lift your hips again. Sink back down, pull back behind the arms. Shift forward one more time and hold here. Now dig your heels down, keep your glutes squeezing. You can look forward, look up, or hang your head back. Try to pull the feet toward your hands to engage the back line of your body even further. And then take an inhale. With the exhale, come all the way down. And once you're down, shake your hands out for a moment. Now, when you're ready, go ahead, cross the ankles, roll forward, your hands find all fours. And then from all fours, we're going to take this right into a couple of stretches here. So I want you to bring your knees out wide, wider than your hips. Big toes point toward each other like you're coming to child's pose. And this is going to be one of the entries that we take toward peacock. Now, walk the hands in close. You're going to set your hands down on the line that you can draw between your knees, palms down. Fingertips to the sides at least 90 degrees right and left. And if you can go further, try to point your fingertips in toward your feet. Now set your hands flat, spread the fingers out wide, grip the floor. Keep your seat low to your heels. And then bend the elbows in, bring your chest forward between the upper arms and press the elbows into your ribs. And put as much of the weight on, of the upper body onto the arms from here with your fingertips still digging down. Now maybe just move side to side. Again, keep your seat low, keep gripping the floor. And this could be enough, you could stay right here. Now, if you're able to take it further, keep your chest forward, hold that weight on your hands, but then shift your weight side to side, put the weight to the left knee, lift the right knee up off the floor, maybe lift the foot up as well, and then bring that right knee down. Shift the weight right, lift your left knee, maybe bring that foot up, but keep the weight on your hands, and then come back down. Shift your weight left, lift the right knee again, come back to center, shift over to the right, lift your left knee, back to center here, shift left, lift the right knee again. And then set that knee down. Go ahead, lift the left knee up and set it back down. Now lift the right knee up one more time. Keep your shoulders forward. Set it down. Lift your left knee up one more time. Set it back down. Now keep your elbows pulling. Keep gripping the floor. Maybe bring the shoulders a little bit further forward. And see about lifting both knees this time. And this gives you a little taste of peacock from here. Now if the knees are lifted, release. Come up onto the fingertips. And then move into all fours. One more wrist stretch here, and we're going to take it one hand at a time. So wrists underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips to set this up to start. And then I want you to slide your right hand over to the left past the midline of the mat. Now flip your right hand over, back of the hand down, palm up the fingertips point left. Spread your fingers wide, set the left hand on top of the right to help flatten it out. But keep the fingertips of the right hand digging into the floor. Now with your right arm straight, go ahead and circle the shoulder over the wrist. And if this is too intense, just bring the hand in closer to the knees, and that could be good enough. Now, if you can take this further, just keep the hands as they are, and then step the left foot behind the right. This is moving toward a modified side plank. If you can go further here, lift that left foot up off the floor. Now, if you can move with this, pull that left knee forward toward your shoulder close as you can, and then extend the leg back. Knee to shoulder, again, pull in, and extend the leg back. Knee to shoulder one more time. Extend the leg back again, and then set your knee down, and go ahead, release the right hand, shake it out. 
Let's take it on the other side. So from all fours, wrist under the shoulders and knees under your hips. Now slide the left hand over to the right, past the center of the mat, and then flip it over. Back of the hand down, palm up, the fingertips are pointing to the right edge. Set the right hand on top of the left to ground that hand, and keep the fingertips of the left hand pressing down. Now with the left arm straight, just circle the shoulder over the wrist, bring the hand closer to the knees if you need to back off. And then if you can take this further, keep the left arm straight. Step the right foot behind the left and open and just stack the right hip above the left. And if you can go further, lift the right foot up off the floor. Now to move with this, pull the right knee forward toward the right shoulder and then extend the leg straight back. Knee to right shoulder and extend the leg back. Knee to right shoulder one more time. Extend the leg back and then bring the knee back down. Release the hands and just come down to sitting on your heels for a moment. Shake your hands out. Loosen up your fingers and loosen up your wrists. Now, when you're ready, come back into all fours. And let's take it from the hands down to the forearms and find a forearm plank. So both forearms down. Now, see if the elbows stay underneath your shoulder, shoulder width. I recommend bringing the hands together. If you want to, you can put the palms flat and keep the forearms parallel. But then step the feet all the way back. Feet about hips width distance, bring your body into line. And just hold here. Lift your spine and spread the shoulder blades apart. Now, I want to twist from this position. So just roll your heels over to the right as far as you can go. And then come through center. Bring your heels to the left side. Back through center, heels over to the right, and this time reach your left arm high. And then come back to center, bring the left arm down. Go through, heels to the left, reach your right arm high. And then bring that arm down, come through center, heels to the right, reach up with your left arm. And then come back into center, heels to the left, right arm up high. Now come back to center, heels over to the right one more time. Reach up through that left arm. Come back to center, heels to the left, and then right arm high again. Now bring it back to center to that forearm plank and just hold. Keep your spine lifted. Press your hands down into the floor. And then from here, just shift straight forward. Bring your chin and your shoulders as far forward as you can. And then press straight back. Forward for two. Keep your body in line. And then press back. Forward for three. And press it back again. Forward for four. And then press this back. Forward for five. Press it back again. Forward for six. And then press back. Now forward for seven, press it back again. Forward for eight, and then press back. Forward for nine, press straight back. Forward for ten, and press back one more time. Set your knees down, come up onto your hands. And just take a moment here, move around a little bit. Now, when you're ready, we got one more thing before we finish this part of the, this part of the sequence. So, come into all fours, wrestling the shoulders and knees underneath your hips. We're going to take this into a modified Russian push-up. So, why don't you bring your knees together, keep your hips stacked over your knees, and then just see if the hands are shoulder width. Rotate your fingers to the sides at least a little bit. Think middle fingers right and left 45 degrees. Now, you're going to start with the arms straight, but then the arms are going to stay bent as we move. Concentrate on bringing the arms to 90 degrees. Try to hold that bend and keep the elbows squeezing in toward your sides. Now, when you're ready from here, just look forward and just take it slow. Shoulders forward, elbows in, come halfway down and hold. Keep the elbows squeezing in. Now, shift your weight all the way back. Bring the elbows to the floor. Arms stay bent. Now bring your weight forward, come back to Chaturanga arms, elbows squeezing in, and then press up to straight. We'll take it two more times. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold, halfway down. Bring your weight back, elbows down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, find that forward lean and hold, and then press up to straight. One more time. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold, halfway. Bring your weight back, elbows down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, keep the elbows pulled in like this. And then press up to straight. One more time. Shoulders forward, elbows in, come down halfway. Bring your weight back, elbows down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, keep the elbows pulled in. Press back up to straight. And then come down to sitting on your heels. And just shake your hands out, roll your shoulders out a little bit. Now this is supposed to be relatively intense, keep in mind. Be intent on squeezing the elbows in toward the ribs and try to get your shoulders as far forward as you can. Now I want to do two more sets like that and you got the choice. If doing this on the knees is hard enough, just stick with this. If you want more of a challenge, do it with your legs straight and that's going to bring you through plank, chaturanga, and dolphin. Still with the same action in the arms. So come back into position here. Now knees together, hips over your knees, hands shoulder width, fingertips out to the sides. And if you want to make it harder, step the feet back and keep your legs straight. Same thing. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold halfway down, keep the elbows in. Pull your weight back, bring the elbows down to the floor. 
And then shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows into your sides, press back up to straight. Two more times like that. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold halfway. Pull your weight back, elbows down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows in. Press back up to straight. One more time. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold halfway. Bring your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows in. Press back up to straight. And then just come back to a seat. And take a moment here to breathe. Roll your shoulders out, shake out your hands. All right, we are prepping the arms and the shoulders for what we're about to do here. So we're going to do one more set. Same thing. There's going to be three, three rounds of this. You can do it with the knees down, and you can keep the legs straight, whatever you choose. You can always go back and forth between the two positions. So bring yourself back into position here, shoulders over the wrists. Now, either the knees together or underneath your hips, or step the feet straight back. And again, shoulders forward, elbows in, come down halfway and hold. Pull your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows in, and then press back up to straight. Two more times. Shoulders forward, elbows in, halfway down. Bring your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows in, press back up to straight. Only one more here. Shoulders forward, elbows in, hold halfway. Bring your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Shift your weight forward, squeeze the elbows into your sides, and then press back up to straight. And then relax. Come back to your seat. Again, shake your hands out. Roll your shoulders out. Just breathe. Now you can always stay here. Breathe. Take a break. You can take another stretch before you move on. But whenever you're ready, just bring your hands down. Tuck your toes. Lift your knees. Hips high. Just find your down dog. Now once you move into position, take a look at the setup. Hand shoulder width. Flatten your palms so you feel weight toward the base of your thumbs. And sink your chest low to the floor. As your chest sinks down, reach up high through your hips. Keep that reach. Pull into the belly around the low ribs. Tense up your core to, to lengthen your spine. And really just feel yourself reaching your hips up as high as you can. Now if your legs are tight, just bend the knees and let that tension go. You can always stay loose and pedal this out. When you're ready, hit take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just bend the knees, look forward, step to the front, take a ragdoll fold. Now feet about hips with distance apart, deep bend in the knees, let your belly touch your thighs. Let your head hang, let your spine round. Let everything go loose here and let the muscles in your neck relax. Now you can hang your hands to the floor, maybe reach to opposite elbows and, and shake side to side to loosen further. And then when you're ready, just release any grip that you have. Keep your knees bent to begin and then restack your spine. Slowly round this up to standing. Bring your head up last. And then just open up your palms at your sides. When you're ready with an inhale, reach your arms up high. And then with the exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Now take a moment here to breathe. Set an intention. Let your mind clear, find your focus. Take a deep inhale. And then with the exhale, just release your hands. Now at the next inhale, reach your arms up high. And with the exhale, slowly fold this forward. Hinge at the hips, stop the straight spine, put a little bend in your knees. Keep your core engaged, move smoothly, and then release this at the bottom. Now with an inhale, lift it up halfway, fingertips to the floor, to your shins, lengthen forward through the crown of your head. And then bring your hands to the mat, and let's step it back to high plank. Now find your shape. Resync the shoulders, palms pressed to the floor. Press the floor away from you. Press your spine up toward the ceiling. Keep that lift. Take an inhale. Now with the exhale, slowly bring your shoulders forward as the elbows bend. Keep your body in line. Elbows pulled into your sides, lower with control, all the way down to your belly. Now once you're down, flatten the feet up behind you. Hands under the shoulders, elbows into your sides. Let's take this up and down through low cobra. With an inhale, just peel up your head, neck, and chest. And then with the exhale, roll back down. Inhale, peel up again. And then with the exhale, lower. Inhale, peel up one more time. Now stay lifted here. Keep the lift in the upper body. Press your feet down. Squeeze your glutes. Take some or all the weight out of your hands. Elbows at your sides. Pull the shoulders back. Look forward. Lift up a little bit higher. Now keep that lift. Take an inhale. And with the exhale, just bring the hands down. Slide them forward. And we're going to take this into Sphinx. So forearms parallel, elbows underneath the shoulders, press the palms down, and dig your fingertips into the floor. Ground your body, kick your feet down, squeeze your glutes. 
Now, as you pull with the hands, draw your chest forward between the upper arms and just reach the crown of the head up toward the ceiling. You're trying to lengthen your spine forward up and out of the pelvis more than bending. Now, as you hold this, keep the back line of your body engaged. Shift your weight over to the left hip. Now, try to keep your right leg straight. Lift from the glutes and bring that right foot up off the floor. And then set it down. Shift your weight right. Lift from the glutes, left foot up. And set it down. Lift the right foot up again. Bring it back down. Lift your left foot up and bring it down. Keep your chest pulling forward. Lift your right foot one more time. Bring it back down. Lift the left foot one more time and then set it down. Now kick your feet down, squeeze your glutes, grip with your hands, keep your chest pulling forward. If you can take it further, reach the top of that up, maybe bring the elbows up off the floor a little bit, maybe a lot, but still draw your spine forward up and out of the pelvis more than just simply bending. Try to lengthen as much as you can. Now, if you lifted the elbows at all, go ahead, bring them back down. And then slide your hands back in. Bring your chin down to the floor. Hands back underneath the shoulders. Elbows pulled into your sides. And we're setting this up for upward facing dog. So when you're ready, with an inhale, straighten your arms. Pull your chest forward. Let your hips hang. Stay in the tops of your feet. Keep your legs active and work to lift your knees up from the mat. To take it further, kick your feet down. Squeeze your glutes. Pull the hips forward to deepen and lengthen the arc all through the front. Now lift with your arms, but lift with your shoulders. Keep your neck long. Keep your chest pulling forward. Deep inhale. With your exhale, pull your belly in. Hips up high, back to down dog. Pedal out for a moment. Let your hips move side to side. Now from your down dog, take a deep inhale. With the exhale, bend the knees. Look forward, step or float. Inhale, lift it up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to standing, reach this up high. Now with the exhale, sink into chair this time. Put the weight to heels, bend your knees, and bring your hips down low. Now as you settle in, just pay attention to your stance. Be sure the feet are within hips with distance. Big toes and knees towards center, belly pulled in. Bind it from above, right hand behind your head, palm faces in. Left palm the other way, clasp your fingers, and then pull the right arm behind your head. Press your head back. Keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your chest open, keep your gaze forward. Now from here, just keep yourself in with the knees bent, lift your toes up off the floor. And just moving from your feet, roll this forward. Lift your heels up high as you can. And then set the heels back down. Make it smooth. Forward again. Lift your heels. And then set the heels back down. One more time. Heels up high. Now hold here. Keep your chest open. Just keep looking forward and breathe here. Now just set your left heel down. Press into the left foot. Come to standing with your right knee high. And then once you're ready, take the legs into an eagle bind, cross the right leg tightly over the left. Now squeeze your legs together, sink your hips down. You can always touch that right foot to the floor if you need the support. But draw your shoulders back, keep your chest open. Maybe even look up toward the ceiling to take it further. Now with your next inhale, straighten your left leg, lift your right knee, bring your hands to your hips. And switch your stance, right foot over the base. Come to standing with your left knee high. Once you're stable, both hands to your left knee, bring it up high, pull it in close and just stand tall. Now, if you can take it further, start to lean back, still lifting the knee. Maybe bend into the right knee and take this even further. Now, if you can go further still, you can reach that left arm up and back, keep the front of the body nice and long. Further still, right hand to the left big toe. You can use that grip to lift the knee up higher. Maybe extend the leg forward and up, just keep your balance here, keep breathing. Now take an inhale. With the exhale, slowly bring your spine upright. Left knee lifted, hands to your hips. Just step your left foot straight back, come into a high lunge. Now take a moment to set it up. Deep under the right knee, left leg towards straight. Feet are hips with distance apart. Pull the left hip forward, right hip back, keep your hips squared, and keep your torso upright. Hands to your low back, palms open, fingers spread wide, shoulders pulled back, elbows wide. And then sink down into that left knee, lift, bring it down just above the floor, and then lift straight up. Again, bring your left knee down low, and then lift straight up. Left knee low just above the floor. Lift back up again. Sink your left knee down low, keep your torso upright, and lift back up. One more time, left knee just above the floor, hold here. Hover the knee, keep your shoulders pulled back, keep looking forward, just breathe into this. Now take an inhale. 
With the exhale, lean forward. Now press into the right foot, come to a pyramid stance. Left foot slides forward, about one pace behind the right. Now both feet flat, both legs straight, left foot points to the side a little bit. And see if the hips are still squared, right hip back, left hip forward. Now keep your shoulders pulled back, keep the arch in your low spine. And we're just going to take it toward halfway down here. So hinge from the hips, lead with your chest. Keep looking forward, come halfway into the fold. And then bring yourself all the way back upright. Hinge from the hips, lead with your chest, come halfway down. And then come all the way back up the vertical again. Hinge from the hips, lead with your chest, come halfway down and hold this time. Right hip back, left hip forward. And then put a bend in the right knee. Feel a stretch on the back of the right thigh. We're going to take a twist here. Release the left hand, but keep the right arm bound. Left arm comes out past your right thigh. And use that to brace your twist. Pull the right shoulder back. Open up your chest to the right. Now you're trying to keep your spine parallel to the floor. Stack the right shoulder above the left best you can. Look up toward the ceiling. If you want to take it even further without changing anything else, try to straighten your right leg and keep that hip pulled back. Keep breathing. Now take an inhale. With the exhale release, bring both hands down around the right foot, slide your left foot back, and this will take you to a little lunge. We'll take it to side plank from here. So the left hand's going to be a base. Roll the outside edge of the left foot, right foot slides back. Now you can have the right foot down or drop the left knee or stack your legs. Keep your hips up high, reach your right arm high, and keep your hips lifted. And this is enough. If you want to move, reach your right arm past your head, and then lift the right leg off the left. Take an inhale. And with the exhale, squeeze in elbow to knee. Now inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee. And then inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee one more time. Now come back to center, full plank, both hands down, legs together. And then walk this forward, forward, fold. Now once your feet are at the front, press into your hands, let's take this in that low crow. Grip the floor with your fingers, lift your heels. And then bring the knees outside the arms. Now squeeze the legs in tight, look forward. As you're ready, shoulders forward, let the feet lift together, touch your toes. And then back and forth to that push-up. As your legs squeeze in, pull the elbows back. Let your shoulders sink down a little bit or a lot. Keep squeezing in and lift back up. Pull the elbows back, sink your shoulders down. Squeeze in and lift back up. One more time. Pull the elbows back, sink your shoulders down. Squeeze in, lift back up one more time. And then take it through your vinyasa from here. Once you find it down, dog, move around. All right, let's take all that to the other side. From your down, dog, take an inhale. With the exhale, bend the knees. Look forward, step or float. Inhale, lift it up halfway. Exhale, fold back down. Inhale to standing, reach up high. And with the exhale, sink into chair again. Put the weight to your heels, bend your knees, and bring your hips down low. Now again, feet within hips with distance, big toes and knees towards center. And then bind it from above, left hand behind your head, palm faces in. Right palm the other way, clasp your fingers. Pull the left arm behind your head, press your head back. Keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your chest open and keep looking forward. Lift your toes up off the floor. Now keep it smooth, roll this forward, heels up high. And then set your heels down. Forward again, lift your heels. And then set them back down. One more time forward, heels stay high, hold here, keep your chest open, keep looking forward, just breathe. And then just set the right heel down. Now bring yourself up to standing with your left knee high. And then when you're ready, once you balance, take an eagle bind with the legs. Left leg crosses tightly over the right. Now squeeze your legs together, let the hips sink down. You can always touch that left foot to the floor. Keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your chest open, look forward, and just breathe here. Now with your next inhale, straighten your right leg, lift your left knee, bring your hands to your hips, and switch it out. Left foot will be the base, come to standing with the right knee high this time. Once you're stable, both hands to the right knee, pull it up high, bring it in close, still standing tall. And then maybe start to lean back and bend the left knee a little bit, still looking forward. This is good enough. If you want to go further, reach that right arm up and back. And then maybe with the left hand, take hold of the right big toe. You can use that grip and pull the knee up high. Maybe extend the leg forward and up.
Now slowly, just bring yourself upright. Right knee lifted, hands to your hips. And step the right foot straight back, come into your high lunge. Take a moment to set this up. Deep in the left knee, right leg towards straight, right heel lifted. Pull that hip forward and keep the left hip pulling back. Keep your spine tall. Bring the hands to the low back again. Fingers wide, shoulders pulled back. Keep your chest open. Now dip your right knee low just above the floor. Lift straight up. Right knee low. Keep the motion smooth here. And then come back up. Right knee low just above the floor again. Lift straight up. Right knee low just above the floor. Keep your chest open. And then lift. One more time. Sink the right knee low down. Just hover above the floor. Hold here. Now take an inhale. With the exhale, just lean forward. Bring the weight to left foot. Right foot comes forward one pace behind the left for that pyramid stance. So again, three feet front to back. Still hips with distance side to side. Both legs straight, both feet flat. Right foot points to the side a little bit this time. Pull the right hip forward. Left hip back. Keep the hips square. Keep your shoulders pulled back. Keep the arch in your low spine. Now hinge from the hips. Lead with your chest. Come down toward halfway. Feel that stretch in the back of the left thigh. And then all the way back up the vertical. Hinge from the hips. Lead with your chest. Come halfway down. And then bring yourself all the way back upright again. One more time. Hinge from the hips. Come down halfway. Hold here. Shoulders pulled back. Keep looking forward. And then put a bend in the left knee. Release the right arm. Bring it past your left thigh. Left arm still down. Draw the left shoulder back. And look to the left side. Now use that right arm. Try to stack the shoulders as much as you can. You're trying to keep the spine horizontal. If you can go further, just straighten that left leg and take it even further. Pull the right hip back. Left hip forward still. Keep breathing. Actually, I think I had that backwards. I think it's right hip forward, left hip back. Yeah, there we go. All right, everybody take an inhale. Exhale, release. Both hands down around the left foot. Slide the right foot back. Come into your low lunge. And then from here, we'll take the side plank again. The right hand's your base. Roll the outside edge of the right foot. Left foot slides back. You can keep the left foot down. You can drop the right knee or you can stack your legs. Hips up high, left arm high. Keep the hips lifted. If you're going to move, left arm past your head. Lift the left leg off the right. Take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze in, elbow to knee. Now inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, elbow to knee one more time. Now come back to center. Both hands down, legs together, full plank. And then keep the hands where they are. Walk your feet forward. Hips up high. And we'll take it from here to crow again. Dig your fingertips down, heels up, knees outside the arms. Squeeze your legs in right away. Now look forward, start to lean, lift your feet together, toes to touch, and back and forth with that push-up. Pull the elbows back, dip your shoulders down a little bit or a lot, squeeze in, and lift back up. Elbows back, dip your shoulders down again. Squeeze the knees in, and lift. Elbows back, let the shoulders sink down. Squeeze in and lift one more time, and take it through another vinyasa. Once you find it down, dog, just breathe and move around. All right, from your down dog, let's take this into half pigeon. When you're ready with an inhale, raise your right leg high behind you. With the exhale, bring it forward. Right knee behind the right wrist, right ankle somewhere behind the left. Go ahead, bring your left knee down, left foot flat behind. Pull the left hip forward, keep it in line with the right, and sink your weight straight down. And look for at least some of that stretch on the right side out of hip or toward the glutes. Now, you can keep yourself upright. You can take it further toward the back bend. If you want to melt it down, you can take it to the elbows or melt down all the way. Just take it to where you need to right now and breathe here. All right, now from here, if your hands are forward, walk them in close. And then tuck the toes, the left foot, release your right leg, and just shake it out for a moment. Once the right foot comes down, inhale the left leg high. And with the exhale, bring that leg forward. Left knee behind your left wrist, up ankle, somewhere behind the right. Right knee down, right foot flat behind, pull the right hip forward, keep it in line with the left. 
sink your weight straight down, and look for at least some of that stretch on the left side out of hip or toward the glutes. Again, maybe stay upright, maybe go further toward the back bend. You can melt it down however far you like, just take it to where you need to here. Alright, again here, if your hands are forward, walk them back in. Tuck the toes to the right foot, release your left leg this time. Shake it out. And then once you bring your left foot back down, bring your knees down to the floor, come into all fours. Now this is where we're going to take it into Peacock. We're going to do two entries. And the first one we're going to take is pretty much going to be the same as we did with the wrist stretch. So bring your knees out wider than your hips. Big toes point toward each other like you're about to come back into child's pose. And then walk your hands in. Now set your hands down on the line that you can draw between your knees. Palms down. Fingertips rotated at least 90 degrees right or left. And if you can, try to point your fingers further back toward the feet. The wrist stretch is actually part of the pose. So just take that to where you can. Now once you set your hands down, grip the floor. Make sure you're pulling your chest forward between the upper arms and bend the elbows in right away. So you're going to press into the ribs or maybe the muscles of your core. Now keep your fingertips digging down. Let the knees go wider and put more weight on the arms. And now this is about the forward lean. So rather than bring your head down, look forward. Keep pulling your chest forward. Think about maintaining a back bend in the upper back. And then as you lean, bring the weight forward so the knees lift. Now you can hold here. Knees bent will be the easiest. If you can go further, maybe extend your legs out to the sides in a straddle. Maybe squeeze the legs together, but keep that forward lean and try to keep looking forward. And work it as best you can. The more you start to lengthen out your legs, the more you're going to have to use your glutes to hold the shape. Keep your chest pulling forward as much as you can. Now, it's not the easiest position to get into. It is certainly not impossible, though. So just get as close as you can with this. If you want to try this set up a second time, feel free. Otherwise, we're going to take another entry, and this is going to be from plank. Now, for that, and you may find this easier, you may find it harder. It depends on the person. So just go ahead and bring yourself into your setup. So arms straight, shoulders over wrists. Step your feet back, bring your legs together, and bring your body into line. Now, make this a little bit closer here. Pull the hands back, maybe about one hand's length closer to your feet. And then this is where you figure out the hand position. Rotate your fingers. So middle fingers right or left at least 90 degrees. Don't worry about this being exactly the same as before. Maybe go further back. But then when you're ready, bring your, bring your shoulders forward. Pull your chest forward between the upper arms. Bend the elbows and set yourself down. So the upper arms are basically a shelf. Now keep looking forward. Think about holding cobra in the upper back. Now if you're going to do this with bent knees, just slide the feet forward, let the knees go wide. And then keep leaning forward to lift up. And again, you can take it through the straddle, reaching out to the sides to your feet, or bring the legs together, but still maintain that forward lean. Now just take it as far as you can and grip the floor hard. Now, not an easy position, definitely not impossible. You can shake your hands out a little bit. If you want to work on that further, feel free. But if you're ready to start to wrap this up, bring yourself back into all fours. And let's take this into Gomokasana. Now for that, just bring the right knee forward toward the center of the mat, right foot over to the left, Pull the left knee forward behind the right. As your legs squeeze together, bring your feet out wide. Now keep your legs squeezing and come down to a seat between your heels. And give yourself a moment. Work to get both sit bones down to the floor. Now to take the arm bind from below, right arm crosses your low back. Left hand reaches back. Find the wrist, the elbow, whatever you can grip. And then draw that right shoulder back. Keep your chest open and sit this up tall. And this is plenty right here. If you want the full bind, the right hand comes up between the shoulder blades. Bring the left arm up from above, and then find your grip somewhere between. Now, wherever you take this to, again, keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your spine upright, just look forward, and keep your legs squeezing together, feet pressing down into the floor, and just breathe here, whatever combination of stretches you can hold in this position. Take a deep inhale. Now with the exhale, just release whatever arm bind you're in. Hands down behind you, lean back, untangle your legs. And then just cross at the ankles, come forward your hands into all fours. 
And then let's take the other side from here. So bring your left knee forward this time. Left foot goes out to the right side. Right knee pulls in behind the left. Now squeeze your legs together. Bring the feet out wide. Come down to sitting between your heels again. And give yourself a moment. Get both sit bones down. Now take the bind from below. Left arm crosses your low back this time. Palm facing away. Right hand reaches back. Take hold of the wrist, the elbow, anything in between. But pull that left shoulder back. Keep your chest open. And maybe stay here and sit tall. If you're going to take the full arm bind, the left hand comes up between the shoulder blades. Right arm from above. And again, work to find that grip somewhere in between. Now keep your shoulders drawn back. Keep your chest open. If you can't get the full bind, don't sweat it. It took me about four years to actually touch my fingers doing this. But anyway, keep the legs squeezing together. Keep your feet pressing down into the floor. And just breathe with this here. Now take a deep inhale. With the exhale, release your arm bind again. Hands down behind you, lean back, untangle your legs. And then come all the way down onto your back. Now once you're down, pull your knees into your chest, squeeze everything in tight. And let's take happy baby, reach between the knees. Take hold of the outside edges of your feet. Now stack your ankles above your knees and pull down on both sides. So pull the knees down toward the floor outside your ribs and press your feet back up into your hands at the same time. Keep the tension working both up and down. Try to flatten your spine. Sink your tailbone toward the floor. If you can take it further, maybe lock a little bit side to side. Further still, you can extend your legs out against your grip. And then finally, when you're ready, take a deep inhale here. Draw down as much as you can. And with the exhale, just release. Extend your legs out fully. Lay your arms to your sides. Open up your palms toward the ceiling. And just let your eyes close here. Let your body settle down into the mat. And then just start to move bit by bit here, fingers and toes, arms and legs. Take a deep inhale, reach your arms out long past your head. And then draw everything back in, bring the elbows toward your chest, pull your knees up as well. And just find your way up to a comfortable seat. Ground yourself under the mat here, stack your spine. Bring your hands up the heart center. Now take a deep inhale, hold on to at the top. And then just let everything go. I thank you for joining class. Namaste.